Hello and welcome to my video series C Sharp for RPA developers. In this video we are going to briefly talk about the fundamental variable types in C Sharp and start learning about string variables. You can see the list of various C Sharp variable types on my slide. We use some of these variables very frequently, some of them not so frequently in our RPA projects. For the frequently used variables we are going to go into necessary level of detail, for the rest we are not going to go into too much detail. String variables are used whenever we are going to store a value that can be expressed as a text. That could be a lot of things like the name of a customer, an email address or a cell phone number. As you may have guessed, we could use strings in our projects very frequently. Integer variables are basically whole numbers. We can store number values that has no fractions in integer variables. We often use integers in our RPA projects. For example, you may need to store things like the age of a person, number of transactions of a customer, number of remaining days until a deadline in a variable. What about the numbers with fractions? These are called floating point numbers and actually there are different variations of floating point numbers. We are going to talk about them and the differences among them. You can use those numbers in situations like where you are going to store an account balance of a customer, rate of change in a number, a percentage and many other potential use cases. Boolean variables have logical values that you can use to design a logical flow in your code by checking if some statement is true or false. Booleans could be used very frequently in situations like if a customer's age is over 25, if a reference code contains some certain letters, if a customer has enough funds in their account etc. It will not be wrong to say that character variables are the building blocks of a string. Basically, each character that makes up a text like numbers, faces and letters can be stored in a character variable and can be used in various applications. Datetime variables could be used in our projects very frequently. We are going to talk about how we can manipulate and use datetime variables in our code stages. As the name suggests, you can store date or datetime values in these variables. A data table is basically a table that has a number of columns and rows just like an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. As you may have experienced in your RPA projects, data tables are very frequently used. We are going to learn very cool methods and properties of data tables. Bitmap variables are basically type of variables that can store an image as a value. We are going to talk about bitmaps briefly since it is not a data type we use in our RPA projects too often. Time span variables basically express a duration of something. You can use time span variables when you need to manipulate daytime variables or make duration calculations using daytime variables. Without further ado, let's jump into Blue Prism and get into string variables. Like we mentioned in the introduction, string variables are capable of storing values that could be expressed as text. A string could contain letters, numbers, punctuation marks and white spaces like spaces and the new lines. We declare a string variable by typing the word string, then the name of the variable, then end our line with a semicolon character. The naming rules we previously mentioned in our last video applies here as well. To quickly remember, our variable names cannot start with number characters, they can't contain spaces, they should be short, self-explanatory and unambiguous. Semicolon character basically points out the end of the line to our compiler. It is just a syntax thing, in C -sharp, you have to state the end of a line by putting a semicolon. We declare the string variable but it does not have any value at the moment. We can assign a value to it by typing the name of the variable, equals character, the value of the string within double quotes and finish it with a semicolon. Equals character here is used when you are assigning a value to a variable. Notice that we did not type string at the beginning the second time because we use the word string whenever we are about to declare a string value from scratch. Trying to redeclare a previously declared variable will generate a syntax error. Let's demonstrate this by putting string at the beginning of our line and clicking check code button. As you can see, declaring an already declared variable will cause a syntax error. Our string variable is already declared, now we are just assigning a value to it. As you can see, I assigned a value that has letters, spaces and punctuation marks. Let's run the code stage and assign this value to a data item in Blue Prism. In order to do that, I must create an output variable under the outputs tab and address a data item within my action with the data type of text.
One cool trick here is that you can create a blue prism data item upon creating output variable under the output step. We declare the variable, then assign the value to it in two separate lines. Could we do it in just one line? Of course, in order to do that, I am going to delete this part and declare and assign value to a variable in single line. We wrote the value of our string variable within double quotes, but what if we wanted to assign a value that contains double quote characters? Let's go ahead and try to put a double quote right in the middle of our sentence. As you can see, the colors of the text is changed, and if I try to compile my code, it throws this error as shown. Change of the colors is an indication of the change in the way compiler is treating these words. The reason this generates an error is compiler considers everything between double quotes as a string variable. When we put a double quote right in the middle of our sentence, right side of our sentence is now considered as the rest of the code. To tackle this problem, let me introduce you to the escape sequences. Escape sequences are a combination of characters that start with backslash character. Using escape sequences within a string value tricks the compiler into treating those characters differently than just plain text. Examples of using the escape sequences could be such as when you need a double quote, single quote or a backslash inside a string value. Let's see it with examples. We are going to create a data item called double quote example and write a sentence to it that contains double quotes. As you can see, I am using a backslash character right before the double quote. When we compile and run our code, we can see the resulting data item has the double quotes character. Let's create a data item called result excel file path and write an example file path to it within our code stage. As you know, file paths and file directories are very frequently used in RPA projects and file paths contain backslash character. As you can see, I use the backslash character before the actual backslash character when I am assigning a value to it and it works flawlessly when I compile and run. Let's demonstrate what would happen if I didn't use double backslashes. As you can see, compiler is confused with all the backslashes because the compiler is considering all the backslashes as part of individual escape sequences.
There are other escape sequences, but it will take a lot of time to go over each one of them. Those ones are probably the ones you are going to use very frequently. You can always check out the list of other C-sharp escape sequences. Last thing about the escape sequences I would like to mention is the add sign character. The add sign character basically disables the escape sequence function of the backslash character and you get what you type with the backslash characters within double quotes. One instance the add sign character could be very useful is upon initializing string variables with the value of a file path or a file directory. Let's redo our result Excel file path example but this time let's use an add sign character. As you can see when I type it with the add sign character and single backslashes Compiler ignores the backslashes and gives whatever I wrote as the result value. When I compile and run the code stage, it works flawlessly and it gives me the same results as before. If I go back to my code stage and remove the add sign character and compile the code, the compiler tries to understand each instance of backslashes as an escape sequence and fails just like we demonstrated earlier. After completing the basics of string variable initialization, let's talk about very useful method of initialization called string.format. Let's explain it with an example. Suppose you need to create a structured sentence that goes like hello, name of the customer, surname of the customer, your account that belongs to the name of the branch, branch has a balance of, balance amount of the account, USD, we wish you a pleasant day. As you can see, some words are fixed in our sentence and other words are just changing dynamically. We can create such formatted sentences with the string.format method. I have already created a collection that contains the dynamic values and let's run our code in a loop for each row of this collection. After every execution of our code, resulting sentence will be written to our previously created sentence result data item. Next we are going to create our code stage and name it string.format example. Then we are going to state our input and output variables. In the code tab, we should type the name of the output variable, followed by equals character, then string.format and open a pair of parentheses. We are going to write our sentence like we intended it to be, but with a catch. We are going to plant some numbers with curly brackets to the places where our dynamic words are supposed to be. Then we finish our sentence by putting the names of our dynamic variables separated by a comma. Lastly, we finish by putting a semicolon at the very end. The numbers within the curly brackets address the variables that comes after the double quote at the end. Numbers must start from zero. The curly bracket with the number zero addresses the very first variable that comes after the comma. In this example, first variable we call is the name of the customer. 
The curly brackets with the number 1 is going to address the surname variable because it is the second variable that comes after the formatted sentence. That way you can address all variables written after the end of sentence. Let's try to compile and run our code. As you can see, the sentence is created beautifully. My structured result sentence is updated for every row of my collection with the different values. This is very useful in many occasions where you may need to create an email body or write a text into a target application from a collection of different values. That's it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to talk about very useful methods of string variable type. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments or email me. I wish you a pleasant day. See you in the next video.